Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the reveal at the end of Loki episode 3, or not really at the end, but during the episode, that the TVA is actually all a lie, more or less, and specifically that everyone that's working in the TVA is actually a variant. Now, how does this actually work? Because my assumption right now is that if Loki had not been grabbed by Mobius, he would have actually just been maybe mind wiped or have like some mental blocks put on his head. And as a result, he would just become any other TVA agent. And does that also mean that like the all the all the other versions of these characters that exist out there are just living in the TVA somewhere? Or are they all killed like the guy that we saw in line on episode one like what do they actually do when they catch a variant right are all of them going to be become employees of the tva or is it like a, a case by case basis or is it like everyone that's everyone everyone that's ever going to work for the tva already currently does lots of questions on that front but the thing is clearly they do all have their memories still in place it's just hard to maybe reach to or maybe it's more subtle things so specifically for characters like maybe mobius he uh he's probably a jet skier i don't know um that's very very possible i guess we'll find out in the near future once episode three airs this also calls into question who the timekeepers actually are because clearly they're not gods they're probably more like more akin to like some race far in the future that took over a large mass of territory and then i don't know found out about time travel figured it out kind of like how tony stark did except this time uh, they decided to tailor the timeline to their specific goals and that the multiverse was going to be pruned down to a specific timeline that only they saw fit to exist. This does call into question what the timekeepers are actually currently doing because if they're not really time gods or whatever, um, are they actually just sending TVA agents to the end of time to figure that stuff out? Or are they doing something else? Like what are they actually up to? Uh, and what do they actually want? Now. I remember seeing maybe a couple weeks ago this theory I think after episode one aired and I, I haven't been watching any theory videos but just seeing some of the headlines and one was like that Kang the Conqueror might actually be a character or uh, might actually be one of the Time Masters. Do I think that this is possible? Yes, I definitely do because the video that we got from Miss Minutes in episode one, I think one or two of those timekeepers were blue and the only character that I really know that looks like that at all, even vaguely, would be Kang the Conqueror. And uh, maybe we're gonna see him in the future who knows we'll, we'll have to wait and see we only have three more episodes but i think it could be a very cool way to introduce uh, a character that maybe not a lot of people aren't all that familiar with i'm personally not all that familiar with this character myself uh, i do know that he is like he's had run-ins with like, apocalypse i think in the past maybe I, I think there's a story with him apocalypse and thor like thousand uh, like a couple thousand years ago or something like that um when thor is very young but beyond that, like, I just know he's a, a time traveler, I think. Um, I know about, like, the Council of Kang the Conqueror or something like that. Like, there, there are a bunch of characters that have stuff like that where, like, a ton of versions of them from the multiverse come together in some type of council. But, you know, I'm very curious to see where they take this from here because, I mean, Kang the Conqueror is probably not someone that many people know too much about and i'm curious to see how they introduce them if that is in fact what they're trying to do the next thing that i wanted to ask about or make note of is how different the two loki variants actually are so we're stepping a little bit away from the tva for a second and specifically for these two variants we notice that they have completely seemingly different backstories i mean I want to know if these two are even genetically the same 
look like very similar or the same person because this female version of Loki wasn't born at the same as Tom Hiddleston's version of Loki. Like she, she was seemingly born female, right? Which is sadly different from my initial theory. I thought that there was uh, a bit of magic uh, or something involved in making her a female character and that's kind of where maybe or part of where she became a variant who knows um, but that's what I had initially thought and that doesn't seem to be the case here in fact they have completely different lives Loki uh, that the Loki that we knew grew up on Asgard with Freya as his mother and he didn't know that he was adopted but very different situation for the female Loki in as we see in this episode also, I just wanted to make a note that uh, she does go by Sylvie. I just had to look that up because I didn't remember off the top of my head. But, you know, who knows? Maybe she does actually still exemplify who Amora the Enchantress is. And they just have a different name to throw us off. I still think that that is a possibility. And I really hope that it's true because it would be cool to be correct about that. But, yeah, again, these two Lokis have such different lives. What exactly makes them both Lokis apart from, like, the outfit and the th and the the horns. I mean, they don't seem to be related in any other way apart from that. And and the use of magic, right? Does the female Loki is the female Loki even a frost giant? Like, do we know this? Because she says that she was also adopted, but she doesn't specify that she was a frost giant before that. She doesn't clear uh, understand or know anything about, um, or we don't know anything about what her heritage was. So it's curious to me as to whether or not she actually. Is a frost giant at all if she say is as guardian maybe in her timeline like she was actually born from freya and odin and and for whatever reason she was adopted after that or maybe she's human like i have no idea who this person is beyond her at one point being called loki i am however very curious for those answers to be actually answered i mean i, I really do want to know more about what's going on with this character and and how her path diverged from our original Loki. Also, that adds another question for me, and that is how long has she been running away from the Timekeepers? I mean, if her path diverges when she was like a baby, and for whatever reason she was female, like, like she was born female, that's the divergence right there from the original timeline, if she's still a frost giant. Um, and at that point, why wouldn't the TVA just take her as a child? like or, and or like prune the timeline there like i don't know uh that's really something that's confusing to me because we we don't understand or don't know exactly what her past is and maybe that's by design who knows but i'm very curious to find out why she was even able to survive as long as she was considering her timeline seems so divergent from our loki so yeah, that being said, we are halfway through this series. It's honestly been such a fun ride so far, and I'm really excited to see how the story continues. Let me know your thoughts on this episode down below. Do you agree with anything, any of the ideas and concepts that I had here? Um, what do you think is gonna come about of the reveal that the TVA is actually a bunch of variants? And also, what do you think uh, Sylvie, Lady Loki, uh, what her actual backstory is because there's still a ton of questions left to be answered. Yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe for more content on this channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.